This is part 11 in our series of lectures on infinite sets. In this lecture, we're going to talk about how one can compare cardinalities of various sets. Recall that we introduced this notation, A with a double bar on top, in case A is a finite set. When A is finite, it makes sense to talk about the number of elements of A, or what we call the cardinality of A, and we used this notation to denote the cardinality of A. In this lecture, we're going to show how to expand the use of this notation so that we can use it for any set A. And once we do that, we'll, we'll be able to compare what we refer to as cardinalities of arbitrary sets. So here are the relevant definitions. We give ourselves any two sets A and B. We're going to use this notation, provided there exists a bijection from A to B, in other words, provided A and B have the same cardinalities. We're going to use this notation if there exists an injection from A to B, and in that case we're going to express this by saying the cardinality of A is less or equal to the cardinality of B. And we're going to use this notation. If the cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B, but it's impossible to find a bijection from A to B. And in this case, we're going to read this by saying the cardinality of A is strictly less than the cardinality of B. So now recall that the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem asserts that. When there exist injections, one injection from A into B and then some other injection from B into A, when such things exist, then um, the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem asserts that A and B have the same cardinality. So, using the notation that I've introduced up here, the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem can be stated in this rather elegant way that for any pair of sets A and B, if the cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B, and the cardinality of B is less than or equal to the cardinality of A, then the two cardinalities are equal. Okay, this is just a shorthand for saying that there's an injection from A into B. This is a shorthand for saying there's an injection from B into A, and if one has that, then the Cantor schroeder bernstein theorem says that they have the same cardinality, and this is a shorthand for saying that. Now this thing here sort of looks like the statement, uh, some kind of a statement um, that has something to do with uh, a certain relation being anti-symmetric, namely this relation here being anti-symmetric. So that suggests the following theorem, that the relation less than or equal to is actually a partial order. So it's not difficult to prove that. Let's, let's um, indicate what the proof is. I'll just include a sketch of it. The first thing you have to do is you have to show that it's reflexive. In other words, every set is related to itself. And that's true because the identity mapping on any set is an injection. It's even a bijection. The anti-symmetric property um, that's required is just the one that we wrote down. It's just a, a fancy way of saying the, uh, of writing the Cantor schroeder bernstein theorem. The transitivity, which is this one here, follows uh, because if there exists an injection from A to B and an injection from B to C, then by taking the composition of those two injections, uh, that's going to be an injection from A into C. Remember, we proved a long time ago that the composition of injections is also an injection. In this example, I'm just simply going to illustrate the use of this new notation. Uh, this is a 0, 4, 7, 9 is a finite set, n is a denumerable set. There's no way you can get a surjection from a finite set onto an infinite set, and therefore this cardinality is strictly less than this cardinality. Remember, we proved uh, several lectures ago that q um, is also denumerable, and therefore we have equality of these two cardinalities. 
Um, in, an, in a recent lecture, we showed using Cantor's diagonalization argument that there's no way you can get a surjection from n on to the open interval from 0 to 1, and therefore we have strictly smaller, the, this cardinality is strictly smaller than that cardinality. Um, and we also proved in a recent lecture that all of these have the same cardinalities. Now I think this new d definition of um, the way we compare cardinalities suggests two questions. The first question is, given a set A, is it always the case that there exists a set B that has a strictly bigger cardinality? And the second question is, is less than or equal to a linear order? In other words, given any two sets A and B, is it necessarily true that either there's an injection from A to B or an injection from B to A. That's by no means obvious one way or the other. But as I've indicated here, the answer to both of these questions is yes. The first one, this one here, is called, this question here, is called Cantor's theorem. And in fact, the answer for this B is to take the power set of A. Cantor's theorem asserts that given any non-empty set A, it's always the case that there's no way you can find a surjection from A onto its power set. So I'm going to turn to that um, question in the next lecture. The answer to the second question also yes, that's a little bit more involved, and um, it turns out that one requires a fundamental axiom of mathematics called the axiom of choice in order to do it, and um, I'll use a version of the axiom of choice which is known as Zorn's lemma to do that. So I'm also going to discuss that in an upcoming lecture.